So, uh, a little bit of backstory, everybody. I guess it was like two weeks ago or something, maybe three weeks ago, we were futzing around on the internet. And at first I was like, all right, this is a, uh, it's probably going to be annoying for me to hear because I'm sure he hears it everywhere he goes. But at first I was like, oh, maybe this is a sketch or something. This dude is lip syncing a song, but I'm not, I'm not understanding what the sketch is. It just looks like he's lip syncing the song. Is that the new thing that's going to happen? Is we right. just lip sync over songs? And then I click through on his, like, well, am I not getting the joke? You know that thing that happens as you get older and you suddenly you don't get jokes anymore and you're like, man, I'm not cool. The kids are going to hold this over. My daughter will hold this over on my head and go, Dad, you don't get you don't lip get sync yeah. TikTok? You're not cool. So I click through and I get to Lamont's page and I go, oh, holy S. Yeah. This is this dude. He's really. This guy it. has the voice of like a 70 year old guy who's seen the S. Yeah. But I'm like this. I'm looking at a 20 year old, redheaded kid. The kid from next door. Uh huh. May have gotten picked on once or twice in his life. And look at him lay it out there. Good morning, Lamont. Thanks for being in here. Oh, uh, good morning, man. Thank y'all for having me. Absolutely. Uh, you were in Houston last night. Yes. And unfortunately for you, look, you're hooked up with a pretty good manager. But unfortunately for you, I'm friends with them. Yeah. And I said, hey, man, because. Uh, then Tom and I started talking, and then Tom was like, oh, I'm representing this guy now, Lamont. And I was like, wait a minute, the guy from the internet? And he's like, yeah. And I go, dude, is there any way you can get him on the show? And he goes, well, the night before we are playing in Houston. Yeah. And then I did that thing that's called the uh, silent stare, where you <laughs> don't say anything else after uh, somebody says, well, we're playing in Houston. And uh, I just continue and? to look, and he goes... So it would be, you know, it'd be a bit of a drive and? to get here in the morning. I just, you just continuously, yeah. this is a very important negotiation skill to have in your life. You just continue to stare at someone silently and he goes, uh, I'll, uh, I'll ask, I'll ask. Hey, it is a very kind thing for you to do, but we're huge fans. And thank you very much. You were at, you were in Houston last night. You came over, what, what, would you get to Austin about three o'clock in the morning? Yeah, like 3.30. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and now we so made good. you wake up. Uh, four hours later and <laughs> yeah. get your ass to air. I, and, I feel great, man. Hey, yeah. look, every Show artist's goodness. dream is to... Every artist is like, hey, why can't, why can't there be more concerts in the morning? That's the time where I really shine, right? A hundred percent, dude. Lamont, tell us a little about yourself. You're from Alabama. I'm from Alabama, yeah. I'm... Uh, um I'm 32, so I'm not, you know, I'm not old, Dude. but I'm not young either. Yeah, so. but keep the face going. It looks great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's the redheaded stuff. Uh, but um, I've been doing this for like 10 years, man, and um, things are kind of, you know, I feel like there's some momentum going now, on. Now, when you say you've been doing it, did you start playing guitar and singing 10 years ago, or did you start when you were a kid? I no, mean, like professional capacity. I've been like okay. making money. I've been making my living doing this. For okay, because you, you come off with somebody who probably... At six or seven years old, no, the gift, no, no. Like I was like sixteen when I started playing. So when we were playing you the other day, so Bob is a huge, huge, huge fan of music um, from the late sixties, early seventies, especially soul, and he loves that oh. because he loves the music from when he was fifty. That's his favorite music. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's one hundred and ten now. What? What? Wait a and minute. And Bob. What? So what I brought it in here is because I was like, Bob, you're going to go crazy. And I said, Turner, I want you to hear. And I played your cover. You have a rubber band man, which is. <laughs> and the crazy thing is, is now for three days, Spinners. for three days, that's been running through my head. Have it down. My, and it just will not leave my head. But yeah, why do, do you have a family that had a, a background in soul music? Is that just something that spoke to you when you were a kid? How did you find it? Because yeah. it's not someone your age and in your generation. That's generally not the first music they gravitated yeah. toward. Uh, so. My, when I was a kid, my mom played like all the the Motown and soul stuff. Like that was, um, you know, this is cassette days. So right. That was her thing, and um, and my dad had like you know, the typical Southern dad. Uh, three cassettes. He had Allman Brothers, Leonard Skinner, and Steve Ray Vaughan. So <laughs> now, <that was> okay, <laughs> all of our listeners' ears just perked up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think we the, played two of yeah. those three already this morning. Say, that's yeah. right up there, Allie. So you had a mix of those two. Did you now? Do you do you like Southern rock as yeah, well? Oh, yeah, man. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I, I draw from both uh, equally. Like the guitar playing stuff is definitely blues and Southern rock. But it's all connected anyway. Yeah. It's all like they it's all the intersected family. in Memphis mm -hmm. in, right. the, in the '60s. So. It's all it's all out of the same playbook. Yep, yep. When you started playing and you, professionally, did you originally start like a lot of people do? Uh, clubs around town, bars, yeah, what have you? Yeah, churches the, maybe. No, no churches. Um, um, 
Uh, there's like you know, there's like one bar in Decatur, Alabama, where I'm from. Is that one bar? Well, now now we have three, but <laughs> hey, at, at the time, big time, baby. Yeah, at the big time, time, there was one, and it was this place called the Brick, and it was like, oh, if I can just play the Brick one day, I've made it. And you know, you get there, and you're like, okay, maybe there's other places to play. So then you know, you go to Huntsville, Alabama, and uh, and all that kind of stuff. You know, I, it really started taking off when I went to college. Uh, I went to the University of Alabama. And um, we'll forgive you. Yeah, it's okay. yeah I was going <laughs> to say, you know, I was wondering if that was coming, and you you are in the heart of. Uh, <laughs> hey, it's fine. I get it, man. Um, but yeah, when I was in college, you know, uh, I really started taking it seriously, and I played uh, every bar down there, and I've done every kind of gig you can imagine. I've done grocery store grand openings at like five, you know, five in the morning. Hell you get yeah. there and load in, yeah. and you're at the front of checkout, and old people are walking in like, why is this happening? Yeah, we're in radio, <laughs> and we do a lot of grocery store openings, yeah, yeah. and people ask, why is this happening? Yeah, so yeah, we've sure. got a real, we've got a real kismet thing happening. So, so I've, I mean, I've done every kind of gig you can imagine, man. Um, but yeah, I just... Uh, when, it, when, it, it, when did things start to make a change for you? Uh, as far as... Well, I, look... <laughs> Um, I know that you've now done some big television appearances. Yeah. Uh, you did uh, one of the the, the Simon Cowell. They got the, talents. The yeah. America's Got Talent, yeah. right? You got a lot of exposure there, and uh, it's no secret. I mean, when you, you're all over TikTok, you're all over Instagram, yeah. and uh, you've blown up there as well. I mean, obviously, so, did something feel like a change, or does it just still feel like a straight line for you? I, I mean, it's, I don't know, man. I, I'm I'm kind of detached from it. Like, uh, I definitely feel like there's. And I'm super grateful for it. Uh, it's just like the way I can cope with it. Uh, if I start thinking about it too much, it like trips me out or like freaks me out. Uh, so. How, how so? That like makes you nervous, or uh, do you yeah, feel yeah, like just, you, you're gonna let yourself down, or in a way, yeah. You know, we don't have to get into therapy on the radio. They, this but, is exactly <laughs> what we do here, my man. <laughs> but uh, I mean, in a way, it's like you know, that I'm sure several artists have felt this way, but. I have felt in my career to this point that there's been many times where I, I thought it was the break or this uh-huh. is the time. Nah, That's what and Leanne it, Morgan used to tell us yeah. too. And it comedy. didn't happen. Yeah. And it's 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 it can it's hard to stay out of the depression after that, isn't it? Yeah. So what you do to counterbalance it is like you just temper those expectations. So like you know this everything's going great right now. I fully expect things to continue to go great. But if they were to not, or they, if something went south, I'm not going to let it just. Destroy me. So, like, when Bob first offered me a job on the radio, I think I hurt his feelings because I wasn't. He's like, "You don't seem excited," and I was like, "I've, I was, I'm a performer," and I was like, "I've been told all the time, oh, you've all these big things are coming." I was like, "I, there's, I'm not actually in a chair yet. We're just at a dinner, and you said this is happening. It doesn't, and and I don't trust anymore. And I think it's that same thing. Like you build a wall up. Do you feel like you get? Do you feel like even though you're protecting yourself, do you feel like you've cheated yourself out of some of your joy by doing that? Uh, I think. There is an argument to be made for that, but I think that I have saved myself much more pain okay. than I have uh, limited myself from receiving. Now, do you look at your view counts and things like that, or are you uh, not even concerned? No, like- no, I definitely do. I mean, like, um, you know, because you want to like make sure that everything's trending upwards. If mm-hmm. things are not working or something's going trending downwards, you kind of want to pivot and uh, audible. Yeah, I can't even imagine that because that's such a new thing. Because before, you were still worried about ticket sales. Right. Things like that, but you have a up to the minute count yeah. of how you're how you're doing, yeah. so so to speak. That's weird. How do you how do you temper that so that you can stay? Uh, whoa, so that you can stay okay. Um, I don't. It, when I when it first started popping off, it was I was like very much obsessive with it, and I would definitely refresh like every two seconds. <laughs> uh, now, like now, it's just the point where I'm like, I'll put it out. I won't obsessively look at it. I'll check it, you know, every couple of hours, see how it's doing. But it's not like a uh, refresh, refresh, refresh yeah. type thing. Yeah, uh, I think we should give people a little bit of what you do, okay, so they can understand who you are. Now, I want to let people know this. I, Tom, we met Tom earlier in the week. Most of our listeners did, and uh, Tom, uh, instrumental in "Hi, How Are You" day, and uh, and Tim, Tom is also who your enemy is this morning, Lamont, because he's the one that made you show up here early this he morning. Us. He like he, we called in a marker, yeah, as they did. say in the business. It's some, it's yeah. kind of a gangster thing. I got he you, was like, you know. I was like, hey man, we let you come on air and talk about your uh, charity to try to help people. So now you owe us. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and um, what but, do you got? <laughs> but you showed up this morning. Your uh, you sold uh, sold out show last night. It's all packed. You get here early in the morning, and then you figure out what something is missing from your life currently. Yeah, well, I didn't know it until this morning when I needed it. Um, 
I mean, I, I used it two nights ago in New Orleans. Uh, I opened up for Lucinda Williams um, in New Orleans, and I, and I played acoustic on that show, and I know I put it back in the van. This morning, lo and behold, it's not there. You are yeah. missing your acoustic guitar. Yeah, I haven't pulled it out since then. And you so don't know where it is. I've it got, could be... I've got some bandmates I could probably blame it on, maybe. But, you, uh, it could be in New Orleans. Could be it New could Orleans, be could Houston. Be Houston. Yeah. It could be at a rest stop on the side of the road. For sure. So now, at your, at your level, the, the companies are just handing you guitars, but is this one, is this one special, or are you worried about it? Like, uh, I mean, is it... Is it like it was a vintage one, number? No, nah, and it's nothing like crazy, but it's something that I've had for a handful of years, and I would certainly like to have it again. Well, and they're not handing guitars out yet, so if you guys know anybody, just uh, well, man. we'll work. We'll lean on. There's a couple right. of guitar manufacturers in the city. We'll see what we can do. But you, yeah, yeah. so we have an in studio guitar, yeah. that has been a joke on this show for ten years, yeah. And we have a, a buddy named Sergeant Dan who sent this to us. Mm-hmm. The it's dings a, it and is stuff. It is a one hundred dollar guitar. The vintage, the 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 relicking on that guitar. Is not from the playing. It's yeah. from the dropping. It's from how many times it's been dropped. It's been swung in here before. It's literally never once been in tune because nobody really knows how to tune it. We, we get it close and we go, all right. So you said, well, can I use that guitar? And I was like, I don't know that you can. Not saying that you don't have the ability. I just don't know that it. And you I know it right it's going to be the best it ever sounded. Listen to it right now. It's going to be the best it ever sounded with him playing it. He tuned it up and I was like, oh, it's actually a guitar. <laughs> so uh, we're going to get out of your way, and why don't you play uh, play a track for our listeners so they can get a feel for who you are and why we got so excited about you. Uh, By the way, Lamont is going to be at Continental Club tonight. I hope you got t- your tickets. The reason I say that is uh, we had him in here to maybe try to help him sell some tickets, but he doesn't need any help. He's officially sold out. So if you slept on that, your fault. All righty, here we go. <laughs> Trying to tell me All you want to do is use me Oh, but my answer Yeah, I'm not using me stuff I said, I, I, I said, I Spread the news that if it feels as good getting you, Lord, you just keep on using me until you use me up. Hey, until you use me up. Mm, until you use me up. Excellent. Hey, Excellent. Bill Withers. Thank you. Man, I haven't, that's made the, that's... haven't made the stank face in a while, but it, it does. Did you, it's does kind it. of hard to listen to Lamont and then not have to stank face yeah. along with him, right? <laughs> right? Oh, man. I'm glad. Dang. That, I was going to say I'm glad that uh, the cameras are on, but they actually are on, and now I have to look at my face <laughs> later stanking along. I, I feel the same way all the time, man. Do you, do you, do you when you see... The videos and the faces you make, is it, is it uncomfortable? Oh, yeah, it's te- it's terrible. Like, a lot of times, uh, <laughs> I mean, people will be like, you need to show more emotion. I'm like, I'm trying to show less emotion. <laughs> <laughs> it's part of the craft, I think, especially that genre of music, man. Oh, yeah, 100%. Who's your favorite? Like, I've been way into Bill Withers in the last couple of years and collecting his stuff, like, live at Carnegie Hall. And oh, I got cool. all kinds of different pressings. of his. The Greatest Hits album... Cracks me up because for, it's got all these pictures of like champagne glasses and stuff on the album cover. And on the back, there's just a raw shrimp <laughs> next to a lady's high heel shoe. It's like, what the hell is going on? Interesting. You know uh, that cover? Cho- yeah, interesting choice from, interesting the, from the record. From record the, record. Yeah, yeah, from the art director. Yeah. Or whatever. Who's your, what's your favorite artist in that like category? Well, man, uh, so I definitely love, um, you know, Bill Withers, Al Green, Marvin Gaye, Stevie Wonder. Um, 
Bobby Blue Bland is uh, a, a guy that I've really been digging on, and um, uh, Lil Milton. I, I love a lot of blues artists too, man. So it, it goes both ways. Yeah. And then, but my, I'll tell you, my favorite artist of all time is, um, you know, somebody a little newer, but um, D'Angelo. I mean, oh, he's man. not that new. You know, he's from '95. That Brown Sugar, that whole album, man. Vo- that Brown Sugar is fantastic. Voodoo for me is like a masterpiece. Uh, it's like one of the most uh, influential albums on my 20s, man. Just very, um, very informative to, like, the kinds of stuff that I, I like to listen to. And um, I don't know. He's just the guy. What modern artists do you mess with right now? Like the, the new soul, R&B? I mean, there's kind of a a resurgence right now of some soul and R&B. There is. I don't want to say no, nobody. I just, I, I don't know. I mean, None I, of them are hitting, right? For I, you? Yeah, I don't want to be, like... Uh, it's not like elitist thing. It's more like lazy. I just don't know. Oh, this. Mm-hmm. I don't, you know, you know, you get to a certain spot. Uh, I'm in my thirties. It's like I know what I like, and I know what albums are going to work for me. I tend to just re-listen to the same stuff over and over again. Sadly, I think but, there's a study that says that around the time you reach thirty, around thirty, you kinda, yeah. your your tastes are, are kind of set. Yeah. It is harder to start finding stuff that you like. Yeah, and I think that's one of the things too. And I, why people get excited. At least people from my generation. You're 30. I'm, I'm 35, so just a little bit older than you. <laughs> there you go. And I think why we get excited is is nostalgia. When you see young people getting excited for stuff that you grew up with, it kind of relegitimizes the fact that you're still alive. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, and yeah. goes, okay, okay, we are cool. We haven't aged out of cool or what have you. Do you feel like you're bringing music to your 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 peers, or do you even is that even a thought that crosses your mind? Uh, I'm not sure, man. Uh, that's a weird thing that. Uh I haven't fully uh, navigated. I mean, when you're in college, it, it, the young kids, you're in you're in dorm parties or at house parties. Are they like Lamont? Do you everybody like? Were you just sort of like a weird uh, party <laughs> trick when they would bring you out, or did your friend did your friend start listening? Did you turn them on to Bill Withers and such? Uh, it was it was mostly like um, it wouldn't even I don't even like play for my friends and stuff. I if I'm not. Uh, out at a show or something, I, I, I'm just sitting at home. But uh, really, so you weren't when you were going out or whatever. You didn't have friends. I mean, because I remember when I was younger, I felt like if if you always knew who the guitar players were or whatever, because you couldn't go to a party without somebody trying to get the cart the guitar set. Because then when the guitar was playing, then the girls would gather around, and then it'd be at a a target rich environment or something. No, I was that guy in high school for sure. Okay, and all then, right, there then, you go. And then uh, in college. Um, I was in a committed relationship, so I didn't. I didn't, <laughs> bust, I didn't bust that trick out too much. <laughs> Couldn't monetize yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. too bad. Uh, yeah. But uh, no, playing out at bars and stuff. You know, yeah, even in my twenties and stuff, I'd I'd be playing this kind of music at you know in a room full of kids that are in their twenties. And uh, my thing is that if you don't know it, it's fine. I, I kind of feel like a DJ in that sense. It was like you might not know this, but I'm gonna like make it hip to you. Like I'm gonna show you. Like and you're gonna be like. Well, and we play like a lot of songs like, um, uh, you know, Between the Sheets, Isley Brothers, and stuff like that. Mm. And, and then the kids would be like, oh, that's the notorious BIG. You know, it's like, right. <laughs> oh, right. They know well, the sample. Yeah. yeah, the play samples it. probably help a whole lot. Yeah, exactly. Huh? Play the sample, and then everybody's like, oh, shit. And they get in. I mean, excuse me. You're okay. Oh, it's oh, all right. Right. That, that, that was a check swing. Yeah, anyway. Check swing anyway, anyway dude. Yeah. It didn't matter. Uh, uh, do you have a, you dropping a record? Is that right? Did we hear that, or did I imagine that? I, I've got a project I've been working on with um, Zach Cockrell from. Uh, the Alabama Shakes, and he's Brittany Howard's bass player, and we've basically got that record done. It's a side project called the Players Club. Uh, oh, nice! Now it's kind of it's kind of up in the air. We've got some some other irons in the fire as far as uh, me going on what's going on with my solo career, but um, that album's done, and it's going to see the light of day, hopefully in the next year or two. Uh, but it's going to be really fantastic when it comes out. So, but uh, yeah, you know, well, we're we're working, and what takes so long? Is it is it uh, is it a mix of original and covers? So you got to do clearances and things, no, or is it all original? Well, it's more like a pivot. Um, that was a side project. Yeah. So and I've got some other things going on that I can't really talk I about. Gotcha. I hear um, you. But uh, because of this, th- these new developments, it's kind of put a limitation on what I can do with because you, your yeah, only your only fans is blowing up right, right exactly. now, <laughs> and it's taking a lot of attention 100%. right now. Uh, yeah. The year, the year of the red That's is right. what they're calling yeah, it, right. and it's blowing up for you. That's right, man. Uh, you do a lot of covers. You do have some originals, right? Yes. Do you do a mix when people come see you play? Or? Yeah, like last night we did, uh, and that's the thing I'm, I'm also navigating that now is um, this newfound audience that I've got. 
a lot of people like yourself know me from TikTok from, from, or right, Insta- right. Instagram doing covers and stuff. So I don't I don't want to disappoint them. Right. But at the same time, I don't want to um, go down a dead end road of just doing covers exclusively. So right. Last, right. Last night we did a, a good mix, like probably 60, 40 original covers. Uh, so. And it's I, I could I could imagine that's kind of worrisome. I, does it feel like at any moment that, that every mistake? I mean, that every choice has high stakes to it, right? Oh right. yeah, yeah. Yeah, definitely, man. Uh, for some reason, like I said, I've been doing this for over a decade. You know, doing like your corporate parties, fraternity parties, weddings, I've, uh, all that kind of stuff. When you're hired um, as a performer and you have a client, it's like, well, they're the boss and you go up and you do the thing and you're not really worried about the, what the crowd thinks because you're going to get your check and it's going right, to be fun. But right. like when you're putting yourself on because the line. Because it's different mm-hmm. because now it's you. Yeah, exactly. When you're putting yourself on the line and playing your own music, it's... At a corporate party or a wedding, it's about that they're like, oh, I want to hear XYZ. some Isley Brothers and yeah. stuff that I know, yeah. and that's just that kid up there. Yeah. Now it's you, and but this is the stuff that you it's care your about. Yeah. This is yeah. your. It's not just your brand; it's your heart and soul. So now, when someone doesn't like the performance or whatever, it's actually you yeah, exactly. that they don't like. Yeah, not so much what everything else is going on, and that's tough. It feels a lot more personal. That's a sure. tough bridge. It's a, when uh, what uh, advice? You know, it's a music town. There are tons of people out there trying to make it. There are other people out there that have been sweating around for 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 ten years and, sure. and trying to. What is 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 there a is there a, a dice roll or a, a magic ball? Is there a thing that can make things change for you, or I mean, what, or you just gotta grind it out every day? You you gotta get you a Tom Gimble. Uh, <laughs> mm, wow! Now, how do you get one of them? <laughs> oh I, man, I, I tell you that that is a a very a very fortunate thing. Like I said, I've been working on this record with Zach Cockrell uh, for a while, and through Zach, I met. Uh, Nick Bockrath of Cage the Elephant mm-hmm. and um, you know we've been buddies for a couple of years and he kind of knew what was going on with me and knew like the struggle I was having in yeah. my career and Tom I guess had came to him and was um, getting out of the ACL thing and asked, told him he was going to get back into artist management and asked if yeah, my little background, Thomas, who we spoke to on Monday. Tom's how we got you in here this morning. Tom's been a friend of mine for a long time. In fact, I'm sitting in the seat because of the advice Tom gave me a long time ago. And you're right. Yeah. Everybody has to get, everybody's got to get, you've got to get someone you can trust yep. that can be a second opinion because too often, especially when artists, we love to doubt ourselves. And uh, too often the voices inside of your head tell you the, give you the wrong advice. Oh, all the time, man. Yeah, uh, self sabotage is the thing I, I try to avoid constantly. It's hard to hard to avoid. It. It's done so it hard to avoid, isn't it? Yeah, mm-hmm. you have that doubter syndrome too, where you're just like, "This is I'm not as good as other people." Or oh, if they yeah. put you on, you last night, you're, or two nights ago, you're playing with Lucinda Williams, right? right. She's uh, a legend here in the Austin area, right? You know her, and it's very easy to go, "Well, I don't even deserve to be here." This is that people aren't none. Of, no one's here to see me. That that's to me that feels fine. Like okay, I, good, I, I love good. that environment. Like good. okay, a little anonymous uh, underdog. Yeah. Like all under, right. underdog is like my favorite. Because like look at me, dude. Like that's how the internet stuff happened. It's that's like, true. It's the that's underdog. true. I love that position. Um, and it was an honor to open for her. Uh, I really doubt myself when it's on me. Like when it's like, oh, you're headlining. Okay. <laughs> okay. Oh mm-hmm. yeah. No, I hear you. That, I hear hey, Lamont, you. I know. I, I want to release a little bit of the tension that's in the room. I know you want to ask us to use that guitar tonight. <laughs> yeah, man. Okay. So <laughs> listen, it's yours if you want it. <laughs> Thank it you, does dude. not have a case or even a bag. I will. But I just open. wanted to. Re- I could feel the tension in the room. You wanted to ask. Your manager's <laughs> yeah. looking at us like he's nodding at the guitar like. Well, I was kind of like hugging it. Yeah, I know. It looks good on you, man. I was hoping you wouldn't ask for it back. It looks good on you. Can we ask you to do one more for us? Sure, man. uh, And then just you're welcome to hang out with us. We're here till 10 and just hang with us. And we'll be us with us. Have some coffee. Whatever. And we'll take the spotlight off of you and we'll let you go back to being an underdog. Sun, I be sitting when the evening comes, watching the ships fall in. Then I watch them roll away again. Mm, I'm sitting on the dock of the bay, watching that tide roll away. Sitting on the dock of the bay Wasting time 
I left my home in Georgia Headed for Frisco Bay, yeah I had nothing to live for home Look like nothing's gonna come my way So I'm sitting on the dock of the bay Watching the tide roll away Sitting on the dock of the bay Wasting time Break it down now Do, 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 do 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 That's uh Lamont Landers. Lamont Landers official on Instagram, you can follow me. He's going to hang for a bit. And I really hope nobody's wife is listening this morning mm-hmm. because Lamont is ruining it for dudes out there that are like, honey, I have to spend $800 on new drums. It's the only way for me to get better because Lamont is playing on a $7 guitar right now. <laughs> and making it sound like... And sounding great. Uh, we're coming right back in. Hang out with us all this morning. We're here till 10 a.m.